Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the 2019 Jaguar XE facelift, but we are publishing this vlog in 2020. So that's kind of weird. Anyways, hydraulic struts, that is the engine. It says Jaguar Ingenium. Nicely packaged, but you know the engine base seems quite compact here. There is insulation, of course. Anyways, as you can see, there are a lot of changes to the car in terms of design. The grille seems to have become slightly bigger. Now, this one has the black exterior pack, which means you get a black finished grille. Now, this black is not just any other black. This is the gloss black. Love the Jaguar logo as well. The bumpers are aggressive on this car and the lights have become slimmer. The LEDs have been redesigned as well. And I love, you know, how bright the indicators are somehow right now. Front parking sensors. It also gets headlight washers at the front, which is a unique thing. Now, it says Jaguar LED technology right there. Anyways, you can see the Jaguar logo here, which is also a nice touch indeed. So as you can see, the front definitely looks fresher now. So does the rear, but they spent so much money in doing the front and rear. They did not have any budgets left for the wheels. That's why the wheels are a little too bland for my liking. They call it the seven spoke dark gray finish, whatever. But hey, they look very plain. Such kind of design should not be allowed to be put into production at all. Anyways, the car is 4.7 meters long. Not much to differentiate as such from the side because it looks more or less the same. However, at night, when you turn on the vehicle, it actually projects Jaguar on the road as well. So here is the projector for the same. Meanwhile, all the doors get a request sensor. Coming to the rear again, the lights have become slimmer. They look very nice and attractive at night for sure. P250 SE, that is a trim name and you get rear parking sensors. There's the reverse parking camera and dual exhaust as well. The lower half of the bumper is finished in black. That's not really cost cutting, but it does do well in order to reduce the visual bulk of this vehicle. So in terms of design, it definitely looks fresher now. And this car in this red color specifically looks very attractive indeed. There is no two ways about it. Now. Coming to the boot of the vehicle, the boot is on the smaller side. So here we're going to open the boot and as you can see, it is around 400 liters, slightly more than that. Not really big as such, but you know, the spare wheel is distinct because it is finished in orange, very much like what you see in Jaguar cars. There is the battery of the vehicle. So, you know, they can free up some space in the engine bay. Orange looks nice actually, KTM colors, if I may, or maybe Honda Repsol colors as well. Anyways. There's a hook here, nifty feature. Same as the case there as well. Now here lies the problem. The XC is indeed the baby jig. That's why it doesn't really have much space on offer. In fact, space is so less at the rear that the only person who readily volunteered to sit at the rear was a unicorn. Yeah, because he's the only guy who's going to be comfortable because space is really very less for a tall passenger like me. However, for kids, there's ample amount of space. Let's quickly get inside. So because of this hump here, only two people can sit here comfortably. There's a 12 volt charging socket, this space to keep your stuff as well. Scooped out seat back and magazine holders. So knee room isn't a problem, but leg room, yes, under thigh support is also not that great. Headroom is also at a premium. There's a hook, there's a handle, same as the case there as well. The light placements here in the center. Meanwhile, you get a center armrest along with twin cup holders as well, which is a nifty touch, but honestly, Jaguar is optimistic because they've given three adjustable headrests at the rear. Obviously it gets Isofix child seat mounts as well, but you know what? <laughs> it should have had more space at the rear because just getting in and out is also not that easy because the seat is on the lower side. And as you can see, yeah, that is not much space, especially with the black. It also robs away the airy feeling, but then it's got the black package, I believe. Anyways, door pockets are decent size. Meanwhile, the door shut with a proper third. When I was exploring this car, I realized there's a Porsche design cap. Yeah, it says Porsche design, this cap. So coming to the driver's seat, let me tell you straight away, the interior is beautiful. Just look at it. It looks so nice and premium. Door pockets at the front aren't that large as such. It gets memory seats, okay? 12 adjustable power driver seat. Yeah, electric adjust for the driver's seat. And it's got memory seats. So you can save up to three people setting. Now these memory seats are not basic memory seats. Okay, every time you change the memory, it adjusts the seat, of course. It adjusts the outside view, view mirror. It adjusts the music which is playing. It adjusts the climate as well. So a lot of personalization there by Jag. This is to open the boot. This is for the headlight leveler. This is the electric parking brake. 
there is a proper dead pedal as well now you know this is so that you can adjust the steering wheel both for reach as well as rake which is a nice touch but this switch is a kind of weird i've never really encountered it in many cars as such anyways as you can see the whole treatment of the door pads and the door is also very nice this is to lock and unlock the vehicle feels very solid i love the chrome treatment i love you know the way the speakers have been done as well and i definitely love the riva loop so which starts from here and goes all the way so here we are there it goes all the way let's turn off the indicators so as you can see the dashboard looks beautiful really nice really sporty as well but first let's turn on the vehicle by pressing this engine start stop button there it comes to life i love the steering it doesn't get the flat bottom but the design is really nice it has this jaguar logo in fact when you turn off the vehicle at night the jaguar logo goes away in a very funky format as well turn on the car it revs all the way to 7000 rpm only the needle not the engine and then press this to continue there the system has turned on firstly we'll turn off air conditioning so you can see these controls are very nice and unique as well very nicely done jaguar very nicely done indeed however there is a 10 inch touch pro screen here it doesn't get the touch pro duo which it gets internationally which is disappointing because you know they've replicated this screen below as well which is there in a lot of range rovers but not in the xc for the indian market which is disappointing the glove box is decent sized and can be locked as well meanwhile you can lock the vehicle from the driver's side too although the seat gets electric adjust the headrests don't they have to be manually adjusted there's no seat belt height adjust either here you obviously get a light along with a mirror same is the case here as well light along with a mirror there's a sunglass holder here and plenty of lights now these lights are touch sensitive which is again beautifully done by jaguar meanwhile let's open the sun blind for the sunroof and there brings in a lot of airy feeling you can open it as well by pressing a button and there it goes down or rather it goes out <laughs> so press it once again nothing happens because that's the maximum it's going to open but it does bring in a lot of airy feeling however when cheaper cars come with a massive panoramic roof you kind of miss that anyway you press this button you know that is for the sun blind at the rear yes that is for the sun blind at the rear that also works perfectly anyways it has to work perfectly what is perfectly it's just a sun blind there's not much function as such you get paddles which are nice to operate feel very nice to touch as well and obviously you get the wiper controls on the right side so a lot of spray on offer as you can see there's a ton of spray on offer and does a brilliant job of cleaning the windscreen as well this is obviously the control for the indicators as well as for the lights it gets automatic headlights it gets automatic wipers it gets auto dimming inside rearview mirror which is kind of frameless and looks beautiful too i love the design in fact the quality of materials has also been upgraded in this vehicle so you know you get this soft touch leather on the top which is not the case earlier car just looks so much better both inside and outside you get this beautiful gloss black finish for the center console as well and this screen has a lot of functions so it's got navigation it's got android auto connectivity it's got apple car play and obviously it's got reverse parking sensors as well with adaptive guidelines too so there's also self park if you want to explore that meanwhile you have multiple views for the camera view too and as you can see there's a wireless charger here so i'm just going to keep my phone right there right now there it goes and there wireless charging turns on right away there it does actually anyways this is for the all surface progress control which is like the cruise control for lower speeds this is for the stop start system this is for traction control and this is the volume control this is the engine start stop button this is the mode selector so there are four modes so you can just select a mode like this and it actually changes the color of the cluster as well yeah the cluster is very nice it's a digital cluster and you can change a lot of things here too right now i'm in the single dial one so in the center we've got the tachometer and the speedometer inset trip information on the right and there is the car on the left just in case you forget which car you're driving press this button and then you can get into various other displays as well so i'm just going to change the layout to a two dial layout which also looks pretty nice and there are a lot of functions in fact this screen itself is loaded with so many things that you don't need to look on the left screen at all but you know this is a little fidgety to operate because it's not the easiest to operate as such however it also gets the same touch sort of a display which is there in range rovers which means if a call is coming then the color of this will also change these are the controls for the cruise control this is for lane departure warning which it is showing right now and the horn is also very nice in this vehicle so the rotary dial has gone and you've got a proper gear selector now which just feels more sportier to operate somehow and below here you've got a lot of storage space twin cup holders right now car keys are lying there there's space to keep your car keys as well yeah the jaguar keys there's a 12 volt charging socket and below the front center armrest there's a lot of space as well along with the 12 volt charging socket a micro sim slot along with two usb slots too 
so yes storage is not an issue at all the seats are extremely comfortable and the driver feels part of the package because the center console envelops the driver really very nice sporty and gives a great view for spirited driving the car also gets ambient lighting along with a air quality sensor let's quickly play an audio right away <laughs> Audio quality is just brilliant. It feels really very nice. And although the screen is very high resolution, unfortunately, it is not the slickest. It's not as easy to use as a BMW iDrive. This car also gets Wi-Fi and Pro services available with an online pack. And it also gets a driver attention monitor, which is again a nice thing. Now let's quickly try and park this vehicle and see how it performs in auto parking. So here we press a button and it is going to search for parking, I believe. Anyways, we get into drive right now. So the speed has been limited under all surface progress control to 30 kilometers per hour we give an indicator we press this button let's see if the car is able to find a spot to park there it goes we are going to park there it auto steers and it's going to slot the car for us into a parking anyways the thing is every time you get into reverse the mirrors actually go down which is a good thing if you are staying in an empty place but not such a good thing if you are parking in a very crowded place because then you can't see the car on the left another thing is that because it's got speed alert system which is compulsory now every time you hit 80 kilometers per hour the digital speed number turns into yellow to tell you that you have crossed a certain speed well you know what is the best thing that the speed alarm isn't that loud and if you're playing music it is subdued by the music as well anyways how is it to drive well let's get driving right away we're already driving what are you talking man all right we are all set to go which means turning off the air conditioning air conditioning off getting it into dynamic mode getting into drive getting into sport traction control off as well left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator driving the motor and off we go As you can hear, the engine actually sounds very nice indeed and is very punchy as well. So the Jaguar XC now is available with two engines. Earlier it was actually available with multiple engines. Multiple engines because the 2 litre petrol was actually available in two different states of tune. Which just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So the lower trims actually got 200 horsepower. The higher trims got 250 horsepower. Now this one is a 2 litre engineer motor, 4 cylinder and it produces 250 horsepower. Meanwhile, the torque output happens to be 365 Newton meters. Enough to take it from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.5 seconds. This is the same engine which is used in a ton of Jaguar Land Rover cars, including the F-Type in a different state of tune, obviously 300 horsepower, and the Villar as well. And the Villar actually produces the same power and torque, but because it's 200 kgs heavier, it takes 0.6 seconds more to reach the ton. However, this car feels dramatically faster than the Velar. Meanwhile, the 330i is actually faster by 0.7 seconds, goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in 5.8 seconds. Although both the cars weigh the same, the XC as well as the 330i, the BMW has more power as well as more torque on offer. Now, this car has 365 Newton meters of torque, which comes in at 1500 rpm and peaks all the way at 4000 rpm. That is the reason why. The power delivery is very linear, turbo lag is well contained and there's just a continuous surge of power. The more you rev it, the more it rewards you by pulling harder and faster as well. In fact, get onto the gas and it doesn't hesitate to downshift either. In fact, the gearbox, the 8-speed gearbox is a bit too aggressive. Sometimes it downshifts so aggressively that you're left wondering why is it giving me a lower gear in city driving when I don't want a lower gear which can get a bit jerky but for, okay, what is burning here? Anyways, for the most part, let me tell you that this engine is an absolute treat because it feels so alive post 4000 RPM, revs quickly all the way till the red line which comes in close to 6500 RPM. Actually, it's a mixed bag, okay? It will rev till 6000, around 6000 RPM for the most part, but it will go to 6500 RPM as well. In lower gears, it will also hit close to 7000 RPM. There, get onto the gas, the response is immediate, and the sound from the motor is absolutely sensational as well. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor there. Ah, what a sound from the engine. Absolutely sensational. This motor is so freaking amazing. 
without a doubt love it to the core and you know what it's got lane keep assist as well which works brilliantly well can you see that okay it makes a red line it marks a red line to tell you you are leaving a lane and it can auto steer as well so when it recognizes that it will auto steer you back into your lane that's how beautifully it works and this lane keep assist it's not like okay it will pull me back into a lane that is so freaking amazing there you see it's doing that and even on rumblers it's able to identify which is a very nice and sweet thing beautifully done jaguar beautifully done there yeah steering assist now what happens is you can choose two options either either you want steering vibrations or you want steering assist as well which is actually a very nice thing making a quick overtake no problem get on the gas there downshift is urgent the response is also very nice and sweet in fact this engine pulls so strongly in the top end that it will go all the way till 250 km per hour yes that's right the top speed of this car happens to be 250 km per hour the same as the BMW 330i click on any of the paddles and manual mode has been activated now it will not upshift unless and until I decide to do so oh my god close to 7000 rpm that is so brilliant there in second gear it goes to six and a half thousand rpm but in first gear it will almost reach seven thousand rpm the motor really sounds nice and sporty good overall insulation as well in this vehicle fuel economy is between eight to twelve kilometers per liter depending on your driving style and this car has a fuel tank capacity of 61.7 liters that's absurd 61.7 liters they should have made it either 62 or 61 what is 61.7 liters by the way the diesel is obviously more frugal that's why it has a smaller tank at 56 liters yeah that's right 56 liter fuel tank capacity in the the diesel the petrol obviously has to have a bigger tank and that's not just with this car it's with almost every jaguar land rover car they know for a fact that the petrol is obviously going to drink more fuel that's why they give a bigger tank in the petrol without even thinking twice that's a good thing actually so as you can see this jaguar is having great performance on offer but thankfully there are no split variants in terms of power delivery like was the case earlier which just did not make sense like why would jaguar be like you know what you didn't pay enough money we'll give you the same engine but we're not going to give you enough power but now thankfully there are only two trims on offer the diesel has less power but has the most torque in the segment at 430 newton meters it makes 180 horsepower which by the way is also decent enough there is the big daddy of suvs the mercedes gls it's the 350d a 63 amg would have been really nice side right now anyways like i told you performance not much to complain about but what is really fabulous is the steering wheel of this car this car when it was launched in 2016 had the first electric power steering in a jaguar car and my god they have done an absolutely stunning job with the steering wheel because the steering offers so much feel and feedback as well i mean it is so precise it actually feels like a hydraulic steering that is the level of feel and feedback from the steering wheel absolutely mind-boggling it's not the quickest in terms of turn-ins and you know the way it moves but it is on the harder side in the sense that you know it feels heavy at lower speeds as well but trust me at higher speeds it weighs up brilliantly well it has this heft to it which makes it such an amazing car to drive because the steering offers acres and acres and acres of feedback but it's just not the steering it's also the body control which is fab body roll is extremely well contained this car actually has 50 50 weight distribution as well and it does feel on the stiffer side but the ride quality is absolutely brilliant what a ride this car has it absorbs almost the worst of roads in its stride without any hiccup whatsoever and that's not all okay forget the ride even the handling characteristics the balance between both is so phenomenal it's just amazing how jaguar has achieved such a great balance between ride quality as well as handling now obviously there is a lot of trickery underneath which helps them achieve all this and more firstly it has a slew of technologies there is all surface progress control which is like the cruise control of low speeds basically on lower grip surfaces at lower speeds it will ensure optimum traction then it's got torque vectoring by braking it applies brakes to the inside wheels to ensure there is optimum traction at all given times and that's not all okay it also has a lightweight monocoque construction yeah which uses aluminium yeah <laughs> it actually weighs the same as the bmw 3 series but the 3 having more power and torque is just faster but this car doesn't feel as light as the 3 series somehow but i love the heft it has i just love the way it has so much heft even with traction control off and power being channeled to the rear wheels there is no nervousness there is no wheel spin either 
because the whole calibration and the grip levels are just fantastic in the Jaguar XE. Now, of course, part of that magic of the ride quality comes from the fact that it gets an integral link suspension, which basically has different components for lateral as well as longitudinal forces. And the result is a ride quality, which is amazing beyond words. What a ride, what handling. You know, there was this meeting which happened at Jaguar headquarters where, uh, you know, the Jaguar boss called all the engineers and like, we want to make a car which is more comfortable than a Mercedes. And they're like, are you sure you want to make a car more comfortable than a Mercedes? That's not possible. They're like, okay, let's do one thing. Let's make a car which handles and drives better than a BMW. And the engineers faked on. They're like, what are you talking about? The boss went ahead and said, you know, let's do one thing. Let's do the best of both. And they have really achieved it in this car. What a ride and handling balance. Even the brakes are phenomenal. Like, sh very sure-footed stopping power. Really sure-footed brakes. Great positive bite at the pedal. And a lot of confidence as well. Now, the ground clearance happens to be 125 mm. You don't really need to worry about the ground clearance because it's ample enough. Come on. Ah, what a sound. Anyways, there are four drive modes on offer. There's winter, which is of no use, at least in places like this, which is very hot. There's eco. If you're driving a Jag, you should be ashamed of using one. <laughs> there is the normal mode, right? The comfort mode or whatever you want to call it, actually. So, yeah, there it is, the comfort mode. And there's the dynamic mode. Now, when you get into dynamic mode, the dials turn red. When you're driving in normal mode, yeah, here we are into comfort mode, the dials actually turn whitish. And then when you get into eco mode, it turns greenish. Yeah, and when you get into winter mode, Mode, it, it's actually rain ice snow mode it kind of turns bluish or something of that sort now what do these modes do well they alter the traction control obviously they alter the engine as well as the steering too so there's more heft in dynamic mode to the steering wheel and overall balance of the car just improves somehow however it doesn't get adaptive dampers at this price point obviously cars do not get adaptive dampers that said you know for the gearbox there's a separate mode so you have to actually slot it into s here to get it into sport mode for the gearbox and i love the fact that you get complete manual control of things so as i see the jaguar xc is absolutely fantastic car but unfortunately the segment is also very competitive especially the fact that the a4 as well as the c-class got an update in the form of facelifts very recently and then of course we got the g20 bmw 3 series as well the price of this car happens to be rupees 53 and a half lakh starting price for the base petrol the top end diesel is priced at rupees 56 lakhs there are two trims on offer s and se thankfully none of the prestige pure and all that stuff which was there again portfolio as well this is really very confusing but now the lineup has been simplified there's no base trim as such which is actually a good thing because with a jag you definitely do not need a base trim you need higher trims with more power and features as well which the facelift actually addresses to a certain extent now jaguar actually states that the pricing of both the petrol as well as the diesel models is the same identical yes the s trims and the se trims are priced at par whether it's the petrol or the diesel which means that if you're buying the petrol s or the diesel s the price is the same same is the case with the petrol se and the diesel se however the on-road price has a difference the diesel is on the higher side slightly by around 15,000. i don't know how that works out maybe insurance or uh, rt or what ever so the price of this car actually happens to be 55 and a half lakhs or so which is bang in bmw 3 series territory the stop start system has turned off the car and here we go so now comes the obvious question should you buy a jaguar xe 250 se or should you buy the bmw 3 series the 330i now that's a great question and a difficult one to answer because the fact is that the bmw is obviously fresher it's an all new generation car as well so yes competition is tough when you get the bmw in the picture and because it's a bmw 3 series it has to be the best car in the segment right well yes it's bigger it has more space on offer it looks fresher as well it has better engines too because the petrol is faster the diesel seems to be more refined as well it seems more comfortable too i mean yeah the 3 series has a lot going for it like a lot but 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 i'm going to pull back to a story which is going to leave you shocked do you know a father actually gifted his son a bmw 3 series and the son was so unhappy because he wanted a jack so he actually threw the car or drove it into a river or something of that sort 
that just shows you the desirability that the Jaguar brand has and the fact that no matter what you say, no matter how fresh the latest car in the segment is, a Jag is always going to be a Jag because it just looks so much more distinct and obviously a lot more desirable as well. So guys, this is my vlog of the Jaguar XC facelift and as you can see, the car is absolutely stunning, very desirable as well and there are very few things where I can nitpick with this vehicle. For starters, I would just say that we need to get the dual screens. Other than that fact, we need real performance variants as well from Jaguar. Maybe the Project 8 should come to India. It will definitely be a great brand builder for the XC. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, you know what? You have to do, give it a thumbs up. That's the like button. And if you like the baby jerk, let me know it in the comment section below as well. Now you might be wondering, is this a different camera angle? Yes, this one is a fixed angle giving you a POV. Meanwhile, I don't need a person to monitor the camera today, but still I have got someone that happens to be none other than the unicorn. So guys, he is also belted up, so always make sure you wear your seatbelt while driving. And if you like this video, you know what you have to do. I've already said that and more. Bye-bye. Take care. See ya.